I am writing this as a memoir of what happened while it's still fresh in my mind and to share it with all of the amazing people here at Reddit Let's Not Meet. This happened about six years ago. It changed my life in so many ways that I still feel like I cannot digest it. I want to start by saying a little something about myself so you understand the context and why it was so weird and foreign for something like this to have happened to someone like me. I'm a fairly geeky guy. I love science fiction and video games. I worked at the time as a design engineer in a factory and spent most of my weekends with friends hiking, playing board games or watching movies. So you realise nothing I did would attract the attention of the cartels. I do not have a lot of money. I just live in a lower class type of life here in Mexico. But the real issue was with my sister, who has a high-ranking position in the public security area of politics, and that is the reason I was targeted. It was an early Tuesday morning and I was on my way to work, which started at 6am. I remember that day. I took my dad's SUV, because I have a small sedan, because they were on vacation and I was supposed to pick them up at the airport after work that day. I lived about half an hour away from my work, so I left about 5.30am. Every morning I do this. When I was leaving, I saw a pretty shady SUV parked like a block away from my house. And honestly, after my sister took her job, I was more aware about things that I saw out of place. I felt a little bit paranoid because weeks before it happened, I felt like someone was following me. So yeah, I passed this SUV and saw a guy on the driver's seat with a baseball cap on. I stopped for a bit, looked him straight in the eye and he just looked down and covered his face. I didn't honestly think much of it. My family had been telling me for weeks prior that I was just overreacting and no one was following me, so I thought it was just some random guy waiting for someone. Anyway, I took off to work and for me to get there, I have to go through a really ugly neighbourhood, which is poorly lit and has a really bad reputation. I was in a two-lane street, that's only one way. I was in the right lane at the time and I saw a Jeep Cherokee just speed past me on the left side of the lane and then continue its way in front of me. When we arrived at the end of the street, I had to turn right to get to work and the Cherokee just completely stopped on the right-hand lane in front of me with their blinker on, signalling left. I found it kind of weird, but I didn't want to be an absolute asshole and honk at them and wanted to give them a few seconds to move. While I was waiting, a freaking explorer came screeching on the left lane. It stopped next to me and four guys came out with guns and one with a baseball bat. The guy with the baseball bat smashed my window and hit me in the face. While another guy put a gun to my head and said, Esto es de verdad, pendejo. Parte del carro. Which translates to, this is real, asshole. Get out of the car. So, please understand that at that moment, I did not feel like they wanted to steal my car. I already knew that they were trying to kidnap me. And if I knew they just wanted the car, I would have given the car to them. But I pieced everything together. The cars that I felt were following me every night at night. The guy just sitting on the SUV outside of my place and obviously my sister's job. I knew that if they took me, it would be torture followed by certain death. And if they really wanted to kidnap me, they would not kill me. So I stepped on the gas. I smashed between the Cherokee and the Explorer and ran over one of the guys. I fucking sped as much as that SUV would give me and honked so I could make a lot of noise and people would notice. My hope was to get to my workplace, which had private security, and call my sister and the police. With all the adrenaline on me, I passed the entrance to my work and I tried to turn back, but I crashed on a corner. At that moment, I honestly felt like my heart would come out of my mouth. Everything moved so slow. So I tried to calm myself down. I breathed and then I saw through my mirrors if they were following me, but I saw no one. An empty street that was already lit by the morning dusk. The SUV was still working, luckily. I turned around, got to work and yelled at the security guards to open the door. I parked at the entrance, got out of my car and I called my sister. After that, I went inside and talked to my boss about what had happened and went to the restroom to clean the glass and blood off my hair and face. When I came out of the restroom and out to the parking lot, there were around 10 cop cars outside my workplace. My sister had already told me to speak with a specific police officer and confirm his name. Everything went smoothly and I felt safe and protected. After that, I moved into my sister's house, which had police guarding it. I have bodyguards that are with me every time I go out. This has cost me my job, relationships, lifelong friends. Everyone's too afraid to hang out with you when they know that you are a target for the cartels, and it's understandable, but it doesn't make me feel any less shitty. Investigations continued through the beginning of 2017. I later found out through security camera footage that there were three SUVs in total, with about 12 people trying to kidnap me. 
I found out that the cartel that was after me was one of the most powerful cartels in the world and that the person who was in charge of investigating my case was killed. So right now I'm working for the Mexican government. It's a low profile job which does not pay much and does not attract too much attention. I've looked for ways to leave the country but I do not have enough money or qualifications because I'm a college dropout and I'm still living with my sister with people protecting me and my family 24 hours a day. And the guys who tried to kidnap me are still at large. I'm trying to make the best of this situation. I've lost a lot of weight. I spend more time with my nephews and recently got into a steady relationship. But honestly, I still feel like I'm always going to be in danger. I'm always on edge. So to the guys who tried to kidnap me, let's not meet. I am an 18 year old male and this happened a year ago. So me and my family own an apartment in Mexico, but we live in Canada. We go to Mexico every year and now own a beautiful place on the water. We got good guards, etc. and it's an overall great place to live. I also want to point out that before I continue, that this story does not mean that Mexico is unsafe. Mexico is a mixture of Canada and the US. In a Canada way, where almost everyone is friendly, and in a US way, because well, it's not always safe by yourself. That being said, any place, anywhere, you should always be aware of your surroundings. Keep in mind that I'm a six foot four male, and at the time I was 219 pounds. So it was around eight o'clock at night, and me and my family, my uncle, my aunt, and my cousin, went to a restaurant that my dad's friend owns. After dinner, I wanted to go home and watch some Star Trek. I asked my dad if I could go and he said it was all right and bring the rest of our food. I quickly grabbed the baggie before walking out to the orange glow of the lampposts, which gleamed against my clothes. I was looking ahead when I decided to turn my head and what I see sent shivers down my spine. A car was driving very steadily towards me. Its lights were bright blue and its windows were dinted. So dark, it looked completely black. Feeling a dangerous aura, I slowly increased my pace, every step a little faster. I kept my call, breathing slowly to help myself calm down. The car still followed, edging closer and closer. The urge to run overwhelmed me. And then I remember that the hotels here have security. And I decided it was time. And I bolted towards the nearest hotel where I knew it was safe. The car still kept following, but at the same pace. I stand in front of the gates where there is a clear sight of me. The car wheels spun like crazy and you could literally hear it hop over a small speed bump as it turned left onto a different street. I sighed, knowing that my quick decision may have just saved my life. The following is a personal kidnapping account from my grandmother Rosie and her brother Armando. As a quick setting, this takes place in La Pet Taca, which is a rural little area just south of Monterrey in Mexico. From here on out, I will tell the story as close to word per word as my grandmother told me and my brother to keep it as authentic as possible, translated from Spanish. When I was a little girl, we always had legends of the witches in the wild. Don't go out alone. Don't go out so late. Don't go out late at night. If you do, las brujas will come and take you away my mama would always tell me and Armando, these things every single day. Mama would not let me or Armando go anywhere unless it was the both of us. And the furthest we could ever go was the little store that was one mile away, which we had to go to get some groceries. We were not well off with money, so we had to walk everywhere. When Armando and I got done working on the fields, Mama would let us play until it was night time. Sometimes we would play tag with our friends and sometimes Papa would chase us around and take us exploring in the woods. The exploring was fun because we got to see animals, but we also got to see the little old huts where Las Brujas lived. Everyone called them Las Brujas because they were weird and would constantly try to do black magic and talk to themselves. One day Armando and I were playing alone because Papa was tired from working on the field all day and Mama had to make supper. We went to the woods and started to explore, but when we got too deep and got lost, I started crying because I wanted Mama, but nobody could hear us, so we kept walking around. After a little while, an old lady heard us and said she would help us. No, you are a bruja, and you are going to take us away, yelled Armando. 
No, no, mijo. I know where your mommy and papi are, she said. I cried more and more, and I told Armando that I wanted to go home, so he gave up and told the lady to help us. Okay, follow me. After a while, she took us into a house that we didn't know, but said Mama and Papa were inside, so we went in, without thinking. We went in, and the lady suddenly grabs us and carries us, screaming to another room. She threw us inside and locked the door. Armando kept banging on it, yelling to let us go, and I just cried and I cried. It was quiet, but I thought I could keep hearing her say, Gloria a Dios que me has dado sangre de dos inocentes con esto. Puedo usarlos para venganza contra los perros que me han hecho mal el pasado. Amen. I don't remember exactly how much time passed, but I remember lying on the ground because I was tired after crying for so long. According to Papa, we were not home, so he went around town looking for us until he came into the woods to look. He said he stopped at that house where we were because something, maybe God, told him to just look in there. When Papa called out to the house inside, the bruja kept telling him to go away, but he said he thought he heard Armando, so he broke inside and looked around. He found us and said he heard banging, which showed him where we were, and when he found us, he hugged us and took us away, telling the bruja that if he ever saw her near our house or the kids again, that he would kill her. Mama was crying so hard when we saw her that it made me cry again. Papa yelled at us for being so dumb and going out so far, and Armando just looked at the floor. After that, Mama wouldn't let us go out anywhere without her and Papa until we were teenagers. Every day I thank God for not letting me and Armando get into more danger that day. I do not know what the Bruja wanted to do with us, but I don't want to know either. And just in case some of you were wondering what the prayer was, it translates to Glory to God for giving me the blood of these two innocents, which I can use for revenge on those that did me wrong before. So, as a bit of background, I live about 20 minutes from the Mexican border leading into a city in Mexico called Reynosa. It isn't odd to just hop into your vehicle and drive into Mexico for a bit of shopping and authentic Mexican food, where I'm from. Obviously, with things getting as bad as they've been, with gang violence and this whole Trump border wall talk, that's changed quite a bit. But pre-2010, things weren't as bad. Anyways, I have family in Reynosa, so we'd periodically head over for a visit from time to time. This was an all-day thing, because if there's one thing Hispanics and Mexicans like to do is talk for hours on end. We'd arrive at around 10am and typically begin the drive back home at midnight. This particular day, I want to say it was in the summer of 2009, was like any other day. We visited my family and did some shopping. At around 11.30pm, my mum gets a call from one of her cousins that a niece we had missed during our visit had just gotten home. So wanting to see her before we left, we headed back over. Again, being as talkative as we are, the conversation stretches deep into the night. At around 2am in the morning, I finally get frustrated and in an effort to get my mum to get the hint that I want to leave, I grab my younger brother and two sisters and lead them out to our car turn it on for the AC and then lock the doors. Everyone is obviously exhausted, so we all knock out straight away. I'm suddenly awakened by a blinding light. It's legitimately startling. And as I try to adjust to the light, I catch a glimpse of my mum right in front of our car. She was standing right by my cousin and both had incredibly concerned looks on their faces. I finally regain my eyesight and realise that the light is actually coming from behind me. I turn around to see a massive lifted Ford F-250 with a black paint job and the window tint so dark that you couldn't tell who was inside. I turn back to my mother and notice that she now has tears in her eyes and it almost seems like she's pleading with the truck. It begins to flicker its high beams, filling our Nissan Altima with blinding light, then immediately thrusting it back into darkness. The realisation of what's going on begins to dawn on me. The Mexican cartel, known as the Zetas, were notorious for kidnapping and murders throughout Reynosa and the surrounding cities, and blacked-out vehicles seem to be their choice of transportation. The truck begins to rev its engines, almost like it's taunting my mother, daring her to move. 
I begin to reach for the handle of the door to go and comfort my mum and assess the situation. My mum immediately notices and mouths for me to stay put. I oblige, but the panic and helplessness of the situation begins to overwhelm me as I begin to fear for my family's life. I will always remember what happened next. My mother suddenly sprinted for the driver's door. The second she moved, I unlocked the car and I heard the truck begin to shift into gear behind me. My mother basically tears the door from its hinges and flies in, flooring the gas pedal before the door is even fully closed. We haul ass down the bumpy, unpaved road with the truck not far behind. I look at my mum and tears are just pouring from her face. She's crying out to God for help as we're reaching speeds of well over 80 miles an hour in a residential area. My mum is obviously filled with adrenaline and the motherly instinct to protect her children starts driving like I've never seen her drive before. With the truck still in hot pursuit, my mum tells me to buckle up. I turn back to the truck one last time to see the windows are rolled down and men are peering out, possibly recording or taking photos of the back of my mum's vehicle. My mum avoided traffic, nearly wrecking twice, but was determined not to stop until we reached the US border. About five miles away from the checkpoint, the truck stopped following us. We were finally able to breathe again. My mum just let everything out and broke down while finally waking up the kids, blissfully ignorant to what had just occurred. We hit a red light about a mile away from the checkpoint when another two blacked out trucks pulled up to the left and right of our vehicle. I'll always remember looking up to the truck on my right and seeing a man, about 26 years old, smiling at me as they begin to flicker their lights the same way the first truck had. My mum didn't even wait for a green light. She just floored it until we were on US soil. We reported the incident to the US Border Patrol who took statements from us all, but they couldn't really do much else. We didn't go back to Mexico until 2014 when one of my aunts had passed away. We still go back to Mexico to this day, but it's so damn unsafe, I just hate it. Helicopters patrolling the air so low to the ground that you can actually see the officers' fingers on the triggers of their onboard turrets. Anyway, Mexican cartel, let's not meet. <laughs>